Ralph, man. We back. Yep, new haircut. New haircut, okay. Mm-hmm. No hat. I need Julius a haircut. Julius Randle, East Player of the Month. Say it louder. Julius Randle, East Player of the Month. We'll keep it quiet. Don't keep it quiet last time because the people we couldn't got, hear we you. Got, we got more work to do. Just don't be quiet because last time they couldn't even hear you. Because on the mic? Yeah, the mic. But you see how I'm talking into it now, so we're good. Yeah. Shout out Julius Randle, Eastern Conference Player of the Month, which at this point, like, we're not – I mean – it's one of those things is like it's expected now. Like it's expected for him to compete in that. You know? Yeah, he's one of the top ten players the in the league sa- right now. But at the same time, it's like for you to think about all the players in the East, it's still very damn impressive. Yeah. You, know, you got Giannis going crazy at the end of the month, but just his consistency. I mean, what is it? How many 30-point games out of – I don't even remember. Anymore. They winning, though. They winning. Winning. Do you know how many more games it takes for them to clinch a playoff spot? Because I'm still freaking out. And I'm sure three. all Nick, I'm sure all Knicks fans are still like, okay, this is gonna fall apart at some point. Three. Three game three win three games? Or three games and they clinch, I think. Okay. Two or three. Depends what happens with the bottom. And you're going out to see them play Phoenix tomorrow. So as of this podcast being out, you'll be in Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Scottsdale. Yeah, more Phoenix. Okay. Yeah. Tempe, I don't know, just not Scott's. No, I don't even know what's around there, so we'll just stick to Phoenix. Solid. You know? But, no, yeah, shout out, Ju. Um, you know, as far as the rest of the NBA, you know, from my perspective, it feels like it's been, it's been more narrative-based as far as, you know, specific player storylines and things like that, not so much like who's going to win the championship yet. But I think that's just based off media. Like, a lot of things I'm seeing on the Internet is just LaMelo Ball, narratives you know mm-hmm. obviously Julius Randle for a good reason has been a big feature of things but do you think it's because LeBron has been kind of hurt so that championship narrative across the NBA hasn't really been talked about or discussed I think it's just open I think there's so many teams that could win it I don't think there's very like it's the media wants to be right yeah and I don't and think, I don't yeah. think they have a very clear-cut way to be right right now yeah you know? because you don't really know with like Phoenix is sitting there at one. Do you really want to give the Jazz the credit that they, I mean, are the Jazz going to be a, a player? You know, nobody's talking about the Clippers, to be honest, really. See, I, li- I think I like the Clippers. Yeah. You know, I think that they, right now, if they can stay healthy, they're the healthiest team. You know, Kawhi, I think, has to get a little healthier. But, like, you got AD, you don't know. Right? He, like, if he's 100%, LeBron's 100%, which LeBron said he'll never be 100% again, which that's LeBron being LeBron. Yeah. Um, you know, it's tough, though. Like, you watch the Lakers the other day, and it's like they just didn't look right. And then the closer the season gets to the playoffs, it's do they have enough time to try to get it together? Because if it's a – if they end up – like, you don't know what's going to happen. The Mavs are the five right now. I think LA is a four. And then the Lakers are the six, right? Yeah. But if you end up as a five and you're playing the Clippers in the first round, like a Lakers Clippers first round? Ridiculous. Arguably probably the two favorites you would think yeah. healthy. So right. you know. And then the East I think Fien- or uh, Philly, you know, is has a chance, but then, you know, Brooklyn if Brooklyn gets healthy. You know, I think that's the narrative of do you this think, season. Do you think all those cats could play right now for Brooklyn? Like, if like, are they just kind of just doing load management? What do you think? Yeah, these I think they're not really worried about it. Like, yeah. they're going to be a two seed probably. You know, I don't think they really care if they have to go to Philly. You know, Philly's what forty five minutes away. They're not worried if they got to win a couple games on the road. Yeah. So I think they're just trying to get healthy, and then, um, you know, I think health is that's the main thing. What do you think about this, um, the play-in game situation? Obviously, they did it last year, but now do you think LeBron's just speaking up more about it because he might be involved in it? What do you think of the play-in situation? I like it. You do? Yeah, I mean, LeBron wasn't talking about it until he was actually True. in the conversation in it. So I don't really like – I don't like that. Like, he wasn't talking about it when they were the, the one seed and the two seed, and then all of a sudden they drop now. Now he doesn't want to be in it. I mean, if you don't want to be in it, don't be in it. I, the, only, the only argument I would make is that I feel like, what is it, 7, 8, 9, 10? Yeah. I feel like if 9 and 10 are not within, like, two or three games, then it shouldn't be a play-in. 
I agree with that. Because, like, for, like, seven and eight, like, if you're, like, four, five, six games ahead, then obviously yeah. you have to do And this. then it's a matchup. Like, if you're if – you're, if the ten beats the nine and then all of a sudden it's a bad matchup for a seven, yeah. like, it sucks. And you won, like you said, seven more games. So I think it should be, like, you need to be within, you know, a couple games. And I, th- I think what they should have done is have the seventh seed stick and then play nine, ten – Whoever wins that has to beat the eight twice. Yeah. And then play off that. I don't like the seven really being involved. Right. That would be my only thing. But I mean it is what it is. That the I think it's better. It's more competitive. No, I agree. Like it's something to talk about. We're gonna be interested. I'm gonna be watching, but I do think LeBron's only bring it up because there's a chance that, you know <laughs> He could be in it. Yeah, because usually with LeBron he's like, I'll just sit out, we just need to get in the playoffs. Well now it's a little different hanging around that six, seven, eight. Yeah, because you lose sure. a game a couple games and you're out. You know, my Spurs. Who's that? Uh, never mind. We'll talk about that a different day. San Antonio? Most overtime game situations where they've lost. So we're right there if that doesn't happen. But that's neither here nor there. Now, a big topic this week in the media. Um, Russell Westbrook's going to have his, I think, fourth year of averaging a triple-double. Yeah. Steph's going crazy. But Scott Brooks just came out with a quote that said that Russell Westbrook's number two point guard all time after Magic and that he just passed somebody right now. I think it was a shot at Steph. What are your thoughts on that? Is Russell Westbrook, because here's, here's my thing. I think Russell, it's not, it's not easy to average a triple-double. No. But is, it, is what he's doing, is that a championship like type of, is he playing at a championship level averaging a triple-double, if that makes sense? Like is averaging a triple-double. Well, Washington's it, a 10 seed in the East, right? So Washington's a 10 seed in the East. I think Golden State is what, uh, eight right now? Yeah, they lost last night, so they might be nine. But I mean, of all time, Isaiah Thomas <laughs> is better than him. Who better than? Better than Russ. Yeah. Like Isaiah Thomas to me, you know, the best player on those Detroit teams, two championships. I think he's arguably one of the top five competitors ever, which you want from the point guard position. I mean, 23 and 11 during those championship runs. So, you know, double-double. Yeah. Um, you know, but then I, I, would, I, would take, I would take Steph over Russ because Steph on offense is so dynamic, even when he doesn't have the ball that he can make teams better. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Russ needs the ball. Russ isn't going to sit in the corner of come off pins or, right. you know, whatever it is and get other people open just because people are, you know, guarding him. And, and Steph won a championship. Yeah, and they're eighth seed right now. So they're eight. Which, and yeah, so like. In the if, West. Yeah. And Washington's 10 in the East. So a 10 seed in the East makes Scott's Brook, Scott Brooks think that Russell Westbrook's the and here, I get it. Triple here, doubles. And, and, and it's and it's a stat, like it's crazy. He's one of the best. Yeah. It's crazy. But still. And here's the quote from Scott Brooks. I always used to say he's going to pro- probably go down as the third best point guard ever, but I think he's passed one and he's going to go down as probably the second best. So in his mind, I mean, is he throwing shade at Steph? He's got to be. Yeah. If Magic is one. Yeah, he's, and it's not like he's going to go say he just passed one Randley that's been retired for well, years. Well, well, you want a point guard. When, when coaches want point guards, what's the number one thing they want? Point guards are, are, are in my opinion, everybody is, but point guards especially are graded by winning. Yeah. And he – I mean, John Stockton had Carl Malone, but he was still – they were still winning. Yeah, they were winning. I mean, you there's a lot of point guards. Yeah. Chris Paul. You know, I mean, Chris Paul's now going to OKC and made them a four seed. He leaves, they're what? Uh, they're yeah. just way out the picture. Yeah. Goes to Phoenix. Now, Phoenix is the one seed in the West. I mean, Chris Paul has changed the dynamic on a bunch of teams. He's never, you know, played in the finals. Yeah, but I do think that we need to change up the – we need to like maybe add an award at the end of, at the end of the year, like most outstanding player, and then most valuable. So the most valuable is actually graded on that. Yeah, There's most value. outstanding would be like Joel Embiid, uh, Jokic. Yeah, Chris Paul would win most, most valuable. Right, and he should. Or like, Jew. That's true. 
I mean, Chris Paul, I would, I would, you know, Chris Paul's made them a one seed, which is yeah. insane, you know, but I mean. But like with Julius yeah. coming from like, like New York Knicks, they're not just like in the mix for a playoff spot. Like they're like right in the mix to like. We I mean, have home court. And if he's playing like that, anything can happen in the East. Anything yeah. can happen anywhere. Well, and they're all playing like R.J. Barrett's playing out of his mind, which I think, I think they all know what their roles are. Yeah. And they're fun to watch. And they're, they're, and they're, they're fun to watch, and they know they're fun to watch, so that makes them look like they're they having love, fun. They yeah. have fun. They play really well with each other. Right. Um, and they like each other. You see that slam cover? That's tough. That's tough. Yeah. They need to get that in the gym ASAP. Yeah. I ordered three copies. Okay. There you go. Shout out Slam. Yes, Slam. Former employer of me, 1099. Oh, wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, a real employer, you know. Yeah, but we, Steph, we, we, Steph's better than Russ. I agree. Russ, is, Russ will end up being top five. I think this year we were like, okay, Steph's having all these 40-point games, but it's not translating. And they were like, let's take another year off because of Clay." And he's like, no, nah, let's get into the playoffs right now. And as an eighth seed. It wasn't, now, wasn't Steph just player of the month in the West? Yeah. So what are we talking about? But the thing is, now we're going back to that playing thing. Now, if you're LeBron in them and you see Steph, like Steph can win two games easily. Like, there's no matchup. Like, maybe you can match up for him for a seven-game series. But like, if you're the Lakers and you have to play against Steph in like one of those playing games, yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that at all, mm-hmm. especially the way he's playing now. But I get it. Russ had 24 assists. That's absolutely. Well, they went on a run where they won like almost 10 straight. Or like... 24 assists. Outrageous. But like, would, is that if, more? If I had 24 assists in three games, I would be ecstatic. But how much of that is like? I Did didn't you have 24 it. assists in your career? Oh, relax, yeah, huh. yeah. My assist to turnover ratio was really decent. Really? Yeah. Four to one? No. I mean, I said really decent, not like. And that was the average. Mm, yeah. Is four, that the average? Four assists for the career. Is that the average? Yeah. Four mm-hmm. to one. Okay. Four to one is great. Do you know what? My my degree holds a lot of weight. Shout out UT Dallas. They Educationally. Call, they call us the MIT of the South somewhere. Are you serious? I went from JUCO to one of the top colleges in Texas. Uh, That's why I articulate so well on this. UT Dallas. What'd I say? Yeah, UT Dallas. Uh, <laughs> what do you want me to say, UT? We're better than that school. I, I just, you know. All right, so let's talk about another debate. So I agree, Steph over Russell Westbrook, but not taking is Where do you rank Russell Westbrook as point guards? All time? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, just ballpark. I mean, is he a top 15? Is he top 10? I go 10? Magic. 1A, mm-hmm. Steph, Isaiah Thomas, 1B. Um, I mean, is James Harden a point guard? God. I mean, now I now think it's he, so, it's well, now, so weird I feel now. like he is. Is LeBron James a point guard? LeBron James could be viewed as a point guard. Yeah, he I, averages 10 assists every year. I think for the fact that James Harden's on this Brooklyn team and they're letting him be the facilitator, it tells me he's a point guard. Kyrie's like, I'm going off the ball. Right, like Kyrie's not really a point guard yeah. to me. Like, I would put Chris Paul up there. Okay, well, tell me this. John Stockton. Yeah, so tell me this. Who makes, has a bigger jump in their career if they win a championship? Chris Paul or Russell Westbrook? Ooh. I think we know how good Chris Paul is. And we, Chris Paul. You think so? It's weird because that's the whole thing with Chris Paul. More people have said he hasn't won. So Washington that's what it is. Washington's not going to win the championship. Yeah, I know. It's more realistic that Chris Paul this year, if he gets a ring somehow. Watch Washington win the championship. But like everybody says that Russell Westbrook's triple doubles don't translate to winning. But they are right now. Enough. Yeah. I mean, just for the fact that like that should be a, one of the lowest play seeds in there in the mix. And I think they jumped as high as But like nobody cared about Russell Westbrook's triple doubles until they started winning. But that's... That's kind of like my point is like, you have to win to be relevant. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, that's the league. Like you're playing to win. That's and I think I, that's a lot of like the young kids, like understand why you're playing. You're playing to, you're playing to win. Mm-hmm. Learn how to win. If you can win, you can play anywhere. I think that's one of the things that we'll talk about a little later with the Keontae George situation is that we've all wanted Keontae to like, not that he doesn't have a will to win. We'll never attack that. But it's just he hasn't been on a lot of winning teams, put up big numbers. But now, you know, changing and leaving Louisville to go to high school and now playing with Southern Assault, like you can see that will to win and that it matters. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a lot of the players around him are having big performances as well. He's just being more of a leader, which will kind of make him even scarier. And he's on a rampage right now. But before we talk about Keontae George, who might be a potential lottery pick very soon, let's talk about two 
of the top rookies in the NBA and do a reassessment now that we've seen a little bit of what's going on. And the debate will be Anthony Edwards or LaMelo Ball. If you had to start a, a, a franchise right now, pick one of them. From the bottom? If I'm just from the bottom. First player, any. LaMelo. LaMelo? Because he can make other people better. I don't think Anthony Edwards can do that yet. Yet. Anthony Edwards scoring-wise is absolutely insane. Like, I, I think this draft is way better than people thought. Yeah. You know, I think, what's he averaging, like 20 in the second half of the year, yeah. something like that? Mm -hmm. His ability to, to score, I think he's going to end up being one of the better scorers in the league. Like, he's, he has a chance to be like a bouncy Brad Beal. Okay. And not that Brad Beal's not bouncy, yeah. but – Anthony Edwards is different bouncy. 18 and a half right now, so he's definitely like... For the year. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's going to be... I'd be very surprised if he doesn't win a scoring title in the NBA at some point. Yeah? Yeah. I think he's that talented offensively. Um, you know, I just... If I had to start a team, I want my first pick to be somebody that can make people better. You know, I think LaMelo's proven he can make people better. I think he's proven he's a, a better defender than people thought, a better scorer, better shooter. Um, and really, he's, he's a great teammate. Like, you watch him, and I think the guys like playing with him. Yeah. So that's a very, you know, you know that's a great trait to have. They're going to just run, they've run the floor so much because they know that even if there's just a crevice of any type of opening, yeah. he's going to get the ball. Miles right. Bridges going everywhere. My, he's, yeah, Miles Bridges and having I, a career year. And I think from, like, the non-basketball aspect of, like, fans and filling up an arena, they both offer something. Like, Anthony Edwards' interviews, he's charismatic. He's yeah, fun. He's, I like, I mean, he's going he's gonna, to, like, he's going to be a fan favorite, if not a league favorite. His interviews are right. just undefeated. You know, at LaMelo Ball, just his playing style. Yeah, and then, it's, you know, it's like situations also. You know, you got, you know, a situation where in Minnesota he's able to do what he does. LaMelo has the ball a ton, you know, in Charlotte. And then, I mean, you look at the Orlando situation, like Cole Anthony. I mean, Cole's playing great. And then, you know, RJ now having the opportunity to play, you know, double-double, yeah. 16, 10 assists, seven rebounds. He's starting to feel it out. And I think um, with RJ, as we – let's kind of go that direction. I think that – and I tell a lot of young players this, especially that, like, I've known through high school, when they get to college – or the next level, like regardless of their playing time, they need to make every day count and get better. Mm -hmm. A lot of, I've seen a lot of kids like pout and like already know they're gonna transfer from a college situation. Not that RJ was ready to transfer, but he wasn't getting a lot of minutes, but he was still adjusting to the speed of the game in practice. And that's where like, as soon as you touch Orlando, it was not a, let me feel it out. Like I'm ready to go play and contribute now. And I think that's what we're seeing. Yeah, and, and I think like that was one of the things like that RJ did great in Denver was, you know, he just, you know, he knew what they had. He had to wait his turn. He got a few opportunities here and there, um, you know. But in Orlando, like, he's got the chance to, to go. There's not a ton of pressure mm -hmm. on them, you know. Um, so it's it's a little bit an easier situation for him and Cole both to kind of start to develop a little bit, um, you know, and – and they're, I mean, they're playing well. Obviously, they need more pieces and stuff. Yeah. But for rookies, it gives you a ton of confidence and, and you're ready to kind of, you know, you know, I think he's ready to get home and, and work. And, and he knows the opportunity is there, which is huge for Absolutely. players, you know. So. And just to, like, leave the season knowing that you belong and, like, the sky's the limit for you. And, like, it was, like, like he's finishing the season with so much momentum yeah. going into the off season where now you have all that film and you really know what you need to work on to take your game to another level, but you know that you belong. And you're going to walk in any gym now with a swagger knowing that, like, you know, this level, like, I, I'm about to take it to another level. Yeah. yeah um, no as far as sure. another rookie, Tyrese Maxey was a guy that I always would say he could he can make he can make his mark on any team that drafted him. And you're st seeing that in, a, like, a, a championship contender, Philadelphia 76er. I think Tyrese is just – I mean, one, we all know Tyrese, but he's just a special kid. I mean, guy, let's, let's, he's in the league now. And, I mean, he won't play five games for Philly. And then he'll come in yeah. and, and you, you wouldn't know. Right. And I think that's a special trait as a rookie. Like, 
Tyrese has just grown up for his for how young he actually is. He's he's just a very mature kid. He's in a great situation in Philly. I mean, they're the one seed right now, and you know, he knows he's got guys over him that are proven in the league. And when he gets his opportunity, he goes out there and he makes the most of it. You know, so you know, shout out to the Dallas kids, really. You know, playing well in the league right now. Absolutely, for sure. All right, so something I wanted to talk to you. Um, we've talked a little bit off camera, but as a lot of you know, that I do a lot of highlight tapes and stuff, and I see some kids across the country. But I'm also in charge of, you know, creating the content that people like you see, and just kind of how I like will go film a game and post highlights and mixtapes and things like that. Just kind of talk about like, you know, it's a 45 second highlight of some of these top kids in the country. Not that you're trying to be an evaluator by any means, but like, how do you evaluate based off that? What do you? What are some of the things you're looking at? You know, the way they move. I mean, with you, you're an NBA trainer, so you know what translates. So, I mean, are you looking at release points, things like that? Just kind of discuss what you're looking at besides the fact that, oh, a kid just had 30. Yeah, I think it's the way you get it. You know, like like you said, like release points, like mid-range, you know, how high is your release point? Do you elevate, um, you know, P&R-wise? Like, how do you play in the pick and roll? Like, like just seeing Keontae's highlights, the way he's operating out of ball screens is pretty elite. Mm -hmm. And you can just see that by highlights. Um, you know, and then it's, you know, size and the way they move, obviously, like, you know, does the movements and the size translate to the NBA? You know, where it's, you know, at that level, you're playing against your Russell Westbrooks and guys that are 6'4", six, 6'5", six, like they're freaks. Um, you know, so movements, athleticism, you know, I think like with R.J. Hampton, that translated right away. Mm -hmm. His speed and his movements, like his pop translates. Right. Um, you know, and his skills still trying to catch up. But with guys like that, like they can, they can end up being scary. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, athleticism, I guess. Um, you know, but like a Keontae, you see him dunk on somebody. And then you see him knock down like a 24 footer. Yeah. And then you see him come off ball screen, have pace, kind of shoot like a mid range like shot. And you're like, oh man, like he's scoring all three levels. You know, the stuff I don't get enamored at is just when I see players dunk. Because you're going to get a couple of those a game, maybe, but you're not going to get 10 a game. Yeah, and most likely the, op the, the amount of times that they're getting those dunks in games, there's not a seven footer. There's not a Rudy Gobert sitting right there at the rim all right. game long. Right. And then, like, you know, for Keontae, it's, you know, all right, he's going to be in pick and roll X amount of times. So if you watch him in the ball screens right now, like his, his ability in the ball screens to score it is top level. Oh, for he's sure. playing a pro. I mean, uh, he's playing – if you watch, he play, he's playing a pro game against high school kids. Um, you know, and then like Case of Wallace, you know, I think you see his athleticism, um, big guard. You know, when I walked by him, I didn't realize he was that big. You know, that translates, he can guard the position. Um, you know, I think that he can shoot it from deep. He can play in ball screens. Um, you know, I think a lot of those kids, the only thing that they're missing is just a little more pop. You know, can you get where you want to get to, when you want to get there, and make decisions once you get there? Um, you know, but, yeah, when I see highlight tapes, I'm more like watching how many levels can they score from. You know, how do they elevate, you know, in the mid-range? Are there finishes around the rim? Right. Are there dunks? You know, like, Kaysen tried to punch it on somebody. Off two feet, yeah. Off two feet. And it was like, it was almost like he wasn't even trying to punch it. And he was just like, dang, I'm up here. I might as well yeah. try. And it was almost easy, mm -hmm. um, you know, and then like finishing around the rim and then, you know, you got to guard your position. Yeah, for sure. You know, and I think that's the, you don't see a whole lot of high school kids want to play like lockdown defense, yeah. you know, and that's why one of the reasons I like Kaysen is, is I feel like he competes on that end a lot. Um, you know, and then Keontae too is just, it's almost up here with Keontae. For I sure, think that I he's agree. just he's just grown up and he's just way better. Um, as far as that, the whole situation, I ask you that is because, like I said, from the media guy, we control the narrative. You know, a lot of people like get mad at balls like and slam, but I want to, you know, 
back them to say that they're not a recruiting service, they're not, they're an entertainment service. Right. So they're going to obviously say, chase these five-star kids around and say that they went off and post six or seven highlights. But as evaluators, they see that and say, oh, so-and-so went off. For example, like I had to go ask people, but there was just the Jalen Duran, Amani Bates matchup. And that highlight tape, you saw Amani Bates hit shot after shot after shot. And from even me knowing how the situation works, if I see four or five highlights from a game, I know that whoever was there filmed the whole game. If that's all you see, it's not like they're not going to post more highlights. So mm -hmm. if you say so-and-so went off and they post four or five highlights, then I'm like, okay, they didn't play that well. But I saw Monty Bates hit five or six deep threes. And the way that highlight tape was like narrated and put together, I was like, oh, he must have went head to head with Duran and that. And then I asked a couple people that were there live and they're like, nah. It was more Duran and that team final team and Amani. Yeah, didn't but shoot I, well. I think with Amani, like, and that's just one example. Again, of, you look at with that team that he has with the Bates team, yeah. like he's not playing around as good as players right. as as Jalen is, you know. So he's got to force more. Yeah, no, that's true. But you see where he shoots it from, like you see the stuff that he can yeah, do for sure. And it's like, dang. And then he does it against Jalen, you know, Duran, which I Jalen Duran is the goods. Um, you know, so I mean, that's the matchup. That's that's another pro. So it's it's that's I think how you you got to start viewing kids. But a lot of these media people and these evaluators will like see these highlight tapes that we give without knowing the full story and take that and run away with it and say so and so's hooping, having a great summer when that kid might have went four for fifteen and not played well at all. So it's almost like. Yeah. But like I say, like a lot of these video services are going to be young kids that are excited to be filming these kids for views and not more for these evaluators to make decisions on rankings and things like that. That's yeah, why, but that's, that's, why, that's the business, right? right and that's like, why I ask why you, what are you mad at that? No, exactly. But that's why I ask you, like, what are you looking at? Yeah, I just look just, at what translates. Like, yeah. even Imani Bates trans, like, I mean, I, we all know he translates. Yeah. But, like, his ability to shoot the ball at that size. I think he's got an ISO game. I think once his body fills out, stuff like that. Um, you know, I'd like to see him play with better players but like that's gonna happen in like mm -hmm. at a point <laughs> like so I mean I you know but I think and with him like he came to Dallas and Texas a few times and was very competitive you know and so I can see his will to win he might not be winning a lot of games right now but like he was in some of these games like Duncanville and stuff like that yeah, he's a dog yeah he's a, like he likes to compete he doesn't mind if his team is outmatched like I think he kind of puts that as like a chip on the shoulder which I kind of like what do you think about his decommitment from Michigan State I mean I you know how I am about colleges I yeah. don't really care I he's from Michigan so what I was hearing was that that's his like if if I'm thinking about it from my perspective I'm saying Amani Bates probably doesn't touch college but let me go give some shine to my favorite college and put more, not that Michigan State needs more notoriety, but to like almost throw them a bone to like just capture, give them more yeah, hype I, I think he goes immediately to the pros. You know, it's but. weird that he, he, but the thing is he decommits now, which makes me wonder why, if it was either gonna be Michigan State or the NBA. But you saw Chris Beard and them boys were the first ones to offer him. Yeah, go to Texas. Texas. Come down south. I mean, they have played in Texas how many times this summer? Three times? Come down or, south. Uh, in the fall, in the high school season? They played Come Houston. down south. Yeah. Um, Savage staff. So let's talk about some of the guys, our, our high, elite high school kids that, you know, you train with that we want to give some shine to. The first one that's not that, as a freshman, like there's not really a lot of ways to be snubbed, but Liam McNeely not being at least invited to the USA training camp. He's playing at another level, and it's absolutely ridiculous. Just kind of talk about what you liked about him. Yeah, I, I yeah, I don't know how he's not invited. I went and watched a bunch yeah. of even the kids who were invited, and to me, it wasn't even close. Some of the kids, it was like, I, I like I, some. I don't even know if they the U.S. people actually watched the USA. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what they were looking at, especially with Liam. Because Liam can handle it, Liam can shoot it. Mm -hmm. Liam is a six-seven forward who can play in the ball screen. He's ultra competitive. He rebounds at a high rate. Great feel around the rim. Competes at a high level. Like if you watch Liam, it's twenty, ten, and six every time, every time, and he can play with anybody. And we've seen that in these, these some of these three-on-three late-night sessions and things oh. like that, where there's some 
dogs on the court. And he's like, I don't care if I'm younger than y'all. Like, I'm. Yeah, I'm he, he this. thinks he's the, he really yeah, he even like this weekend in in Florida, mm-hmm. like he made it known that he's one of the best freshmen in America. Like, and you go by proof. Like, they are undefeated. They have not lost, and they played some of the best talent in the country. You know, so you played the best team from the South. You played, you know, you're probably the best team in the Midwest, but you played everybody in the Midwest, and you haven't lost, and you've been the best player in the court every single every game. Every single time. His consistency is insane. So I think, you know, when he's in the gym, obviously, all the time with me and stuff, but he's pissed, you know, that he didn't make it. But I like that, that he's got that chip on his shoulder, you know. Um, but he's the, another guy that translates. Yeah. Like his elevation on his mid range is elite. If he grows two more inches and ends up being six nine, he's gonna be an absolute problem because his skill set, the way he can handle it in ball screens and make decisions, is is insane. No, I love him. I filmed him a few weeks ago and just in passing because I had to go to another court. I was like, you know, let me show Liam some love. I filmed him probably six minutes. And what do you have? Eight points, mm-hmm. and scored from every single level. Three caught it in the mid post, you know, downhill attacking, finished with both hands. Yeah, I can get it off the off the glass, defensive glass, push it in transition, make plays. Um, I mean, game winners. You saw it against. I think it was uh, Team Griffin. Yeah. You know, game winner. He's not afraid of the moment. You know, so I mean, you put him and then the kid Trey um, Johnson, you know, who's playing sixteen. You know, has had some really good moments. I think he's another kid, you know, from the Dallas area that that's shown some things. And with Team Griffin, I like, I've like their schedule on that 16 team. They probably one of the toughest schedules no possible. And like his name's always mentioned as one of the top producers on that yeah. team. Yeah, you a, see, you see his talent, and you know he doesn't do it all the time because he's still young. But it's like you see, you know, like he worked out with our pros. And they were all asking, like, who he was. Yeah. So when pros are asking who you are, that's when you know you, you got something. And question, Trey, he was invited to the USA team, right? Trey was, yeah. He was? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Trey was. Yeah. But, no, I think right there, like, if you just start with Liam and Liam's Trey, a top ten kid. Yeah. Look, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand how he's not. And I think another thing, like we talked about off camera, like, these <clears> rankings <throat> aren't just updated every single – second and the uh, freshman rankings nationally don't have is I think they do like 30. Okay. So like a lot of times they'll get it wrong the first time and it's just going to take a little longer but no I mean it definitely. It and def- to me he's a perfect fit in the USA basketball system because his versatility like you can ask him to stand in the corner you can you can do multiple things with him you know. Your voice cracking? Yeah I have okay. like a <clears throat> but we're back but you can do multiple things with him. Right no for sure. Uh, yeah, so that's, that's special. So, yeah, those two kids in the 2024 class, like just leading the way for Texas, is going to be special. I know after Brad, uh, Brad Ball's life saw him the first time, he's like, that kid's going to have a 50 point game before the, his career's over. Who's that, Trey? No, Liam. 50. <laughs> but you know how Brad is. Good God, Brad. You know, Brad saw Liam the first time, he's like, yeah, that's a YouTube sensation. <laughs> Uh, but he's tough. Yeah, for I sure. just like I don't know if he'll ever score fifty, but he'll you know. Well, I think the first 30, time we saw him, I think the 30, first 12 and eight. Yeah, that's the thing. I think the first time we saw him, we saw him be a bucket getter, and that was when he was very like just starting as a freshman. But now we see everything he's capable of doing. Like like you said, triple double opportunity yeah. every single time. Yeah, no, he's really good. He, he reminds me of like a how the league's going, which is like point forwards and guys yeah. that can handle it at that size and make plays. Yeah. Let's talk about Godson a little bit. Um, Trent Walters, your Godson, um, JL 316s, you know, one of his situations was, you know, for early in the spring, he was just in here training because he really wasn't on the AAU team. Mm-hmm. So I know everybody involved, him, his brother, you, everybody was getting antsy to see how everything would translate once he gets onto an AAU program. And right away, I mean, that kid is different. He's just a dog. And for y'all that don't know, Trent Walters, what, 5'8"? Five 5'8", eight? Five eight, yeah. But completely demands, like, runs the show, demands respect from everybody on the court, like, runs at his pace. Everybody knows who the alpha dog is when he's on the court. Play yeah, I for think, JL316 EYBL. Yeah, he's another one, like an alpha, like another one that, you know, yesterday worked out with Max A. Smith, um, Marcus Garrett, Davion Harmon. 
and you know he's running through these you know NBA stuff and they're like yo he moves different you know so the only thing with him he's 5'8 but he's a division one basketball player it's what level he's going to end up being he's an alpha um he controls the game at whatever pace he wants it to go he can play it fast he can play it slow um he's a phenomenal athlete you know and I would say he's the biggest I mean one of the bigger dogs I've ever had come through here as far as like competitive nature like he just does not care um you know and, and he's played really well another one is Drew Steffi I think you know has made leaps and bounds you know he he was like 5'11 no ball skills and now he's six five ball skills can play ball screen they play him at the point and team griffin he can play pace is so good man yeah and he's just in you know he's one of those kids it's like you look at and you're like i'm gonna dog him and then all of a sudden he's got 26 yeah and it's like whoa because i filmed that game drive nation team griffin and like even like i saw the stats i was like there's no way he had that many points and i go through the film like okay he does he yeah and then, and then you know, like growth, like R.J. Jones, I, I thought showed a ton of growth in that game, 11 points, or 11 assists, 9 points, like really controlled the tempo. Um, and that's a, one kid that's transitioning into a point guard the right way, in my opinion. A lot of people are like, okay, well, you're this size, so go be a point guard. And I think his decision-making, and just like you said, he plays with It's the, coming. Yeah. It's not all the way there, but it's like you can see it start to come, and, you know, he's playing better, and, you know, I was I thought K.J. Lewis played well that game. I like the big from Oklahoma, or Team Griffin. Um, Garrison. Good Lord. Like, even just, like, the small, like, chippies around the basket where he finishes from and his, like, release points and stuff. He's able to catch the ball. Yeah. You know, and he defensively is just – he's really – I think he'll end up being one of the better players, the better bigs in the country. Um, and then they got that, like, 6'8 wing, number 11, light-skinned kid. Yeah, yeah, he, he, caught, he caught the lob in that game. Mm -hmm. Shoots it. Mm -hmm. He's a high major, no question. So. And you like McBride off Drive Nation, another kid that's come through in here. A while. <clears throat> Justin is – can play multiple positions. 6'6", six, six, can handle it, can shoot it, can get to the rim. He's way more athletic than I thought he was. He does some things in here that I'm like, whoa. Um, you know, he's just got, he's got a ways to go as far as understanding footwork, pace. Um, you know, you almost got to grab his shirt sometimes and slow him down. Yeah. But the talent is there for him. Um, you know, and K.J. Lewis, you know, offer from Texas, right? Just got an offer from Texas? K.J. got an offer. Ron Holland got an offer. Tyler Smith. Yeah. Jacoby Walters got for the, for the guys that I saw. Yeah, so all, like, sophomores, just Houston, Dallas. You know, Tyler's from Houston. The other three are from Dallas, but... You know, just the talent level, I think, is, is good. Um, it's just, you know, hopefully these kids understand that the talent only can take you so far. Right. And, and the work ethic is what takes you farther. And that's, you know, your Keontes. Yeah. You could see he's been in the gym. Your, you know, Trentons, Liams, um, you know. And, and as we finish up, let's – I just want you to, like, because we always talk about it. You talk about it to a lot of kids off the court – while like there's so much entertainment and social media that can consume these you know young kids just talk about how important it is if you like are talent wise you know looking ahead to possibly being an NBA player just talk about how important it is to watch NBA games and just study that yeah we'll study like the skill sets I think study like space you know Kyle I mean high school and college are so much different than the NBA NBA plays in space mm -hmm. but the skill sets you know, so like if you are six seven, six eight, and all you can do is rebound and dunk, you don't translate. Period. You have if you don't have ball skills and you can't shoot it, like that doesn't translate to the NBA. It may translate to college. And the thing is, and like you say, it may translate to college, and like you're gonna get recruited so hard just because you can do that, it's gonna make your mind think, okay, I'm an NBA player because of all these high major offers. Where yeah, but then once you yet. get there. Mm -hmm. And you come against athletes that are the, the same athleticism as you, the same size. Now what are you going to do? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the, you know, that's the thing. I think being honest with yourself, like it's okay to not be good enough right now. It's what you do to try to be the best you can be. Um, you know, so I, I think like for the young kids, like even the big time ones, like your Amani Bates, your Jalen Derns, your – Keontes, um, you know, kids are like, just work. Put in the work, know what you got to do every single day. 
Um, don't let all the, you know, social media stuff. Like, that's all good. I think kids should be able to brand themselves, one. You know? I mean. For sure. For sure. Yeah. You know, just don't let it go to your head. Stay in the gym. You know, reach out to, you know, I think NBA players do a great job, kind of big brother in a lot of these kids and showing them the way. So, you know, get like a good mentor and understand the way it goes, you know, because um, talent's only going to get you so far out here. Well, shit, I think that's a good place to leave it, man. Um, enjoy Phoenix, and we'll be back at this next week. Good. Appreciate y'all watching. That was Lab Talk. IFM Hoopers, Tyler Ralph. We'll see y'all soon. Here.